Well, today we are talking about butterflies, birds, and weeds. So uh, stay tuned for the connection here. <coughs> Up until about a week ago, this little uh, wren box, or house wren box, was occupied. And uh, now it's empty. And although there are still birds in the midst of breeding, it's pretty quiet in the garden. So what about the bird side of this equation? Well, the house wrens are interesting. As you saw just a moment ago with the wrens carrying food back to their young, when birds are feeding their young, they need a lot of food to do that. They consume a ton of food for their size because there's crazy, crazy rapid growth going on in those nestlings. Now what's interesting about the house wrens, although we never actually caught it on film because it's really hard to in the dense undergrowth of our garden, they're an interesting migratory bird because they go right into that dense undergrowth and this year they were loving our garden. We had at least two pairs that basically were right in the garden and a few pairs that were just outside the garden. So super high density. <clears throat> What's interesting about this story as the birds, i.e. the house wrens, finished their nesting cycle, something else happened. So it's getting late in the day and uh, even though there are a few still kicking around. This is the only cabbage white butterfly that I can find, which just happened to drown in our uh, worm casting tea. Anyways, this is basically the other thing that happened. We noticed all spring, despite the wet weather and uh, for what I would have said was kind of optimal conditions for them, these butterflies in our garden space never really made much of an appearance until now. So it may be partially coincidence, but Given the amount of biomass that uh, a pair of house wrens needs to feed its young, and given the relatively small space of this garden that contains a lot of our brassicas, and given our history of fairly large numbers of cabbage whites, it seems interesting that the population explosion happened... I'm, I'm saying relative. I believe the wrens fledged around a week ago. It could have been two weeks ago, because they were still kicking around the garden. <clears throat> and we weren't paying super, super, super close attention, which is bad on us, but in that sort of, let's say, two-week space of time, the cabbage whites went from being the occasional individual, and very few on the brassicas of any kind, to, in some cases, a complete infestation. So you've seen this row of red Russian kale before, but I'm coming to this one for a reason. Essentially, as you can see, there is a little bit of cabbage white damage on it. Some of the leaves do have some uh, some holes in them, but for the most part, this row, in my opinion, looks to be in relatively good shape. Now what's interesting about it, this row is getting some shading from the tomatoes behind them for the late afternoon, so the hottest part of the day. But even though, yes, there are some weeds, there's very little weed competition here. We did mulch quite heavy down uh, both sides of this row. And we're just now starting to get to the point that a few weeds are poking through. But all said and done, this red Russian kale is really uh, sort of suppressing the weeds. Now before I show you the next little bit of red Russian kale, I'm going to sort of talk about something that uh, sometimes does come up in that sometimes spacing plants out, i.e. randomly around the garden, sort of hiding them from the pests can sometimes work to, uh, to thwart some of your pest issues. However, what I'm about to show you is partially contradictory to that, but there's a compounding factor that uh, I think is really important and is kind of the last part of this video and really talking about weeds. So here we have one of a couple red Russian kale volunteers. These came up, un they were unplanted by us, they uh, came up in these beds, <clears throat> likely from some soil that we moved from one of the other beds which is completely great to have, have that happen. But as you can see, the cabbage white damage here is a lot more extensive. Now, I have, as you can see kind of in this corner here, sorry, sorry for my blurry finger, in this area here, I have actually weeded quite a bit. And uh, essentially, and sorry even down in the front here a bit too, no, it probably doesn't look like it. But essentially this particular plant, and there is actually two or three of them in here, got a great start early in the year. But the weeds 
outcompeted it. And even though it still benefited from the afternoon shade, etc., the, the weeds that were in here, uh, mostly grasses and lambs quarters, really overtook it. And so I find this interesting. I'll come down here a bit because this skeletonized plant, to me, kind of emphasizes that other fact that basically pests, I'm going to say that kind of loosely, but pests tend to attack plants when they're essentially not happy or uh, to put it in other ways their their basic needs aren't being met they're not uh, getting the optimal growth conditions that they need and I think this plant even though it had an amazing start it shows kind of twofold a what weeds can do to a plant <laughs> and I, I would consider red Russian kale pretty hardy pretty weed tolerant by garden vegetable standards but uh, if you've got a few tucked out of the way, you can see what happens. And uh, I find it also extremely interesting because this plant, although I've kind of uncovered it a bit now, was pretty hidden. So because the cabbage whites are using sort of the hue of the plant or the color of the plant as they see it as an indicator, they were able to find this sort of partially hidden plant. <clears throat> and I'll show you another one that was even more hidden. But they've been able to find this partially hidden plant as opposed to and target it because it was essentially not in fantastic shape as opposed to targeting the more open grown and basically I'm going to say healthier despite their spring setback uh, plants that were uh, sort of easier to find and here's another one I don't think it has any leaves left now as you can see it is basically completely in the understory which of course is not the way that kale wants to grow <clears throat> but this plant Again, it's hidden in there, and I've uh, basically weeded quite a bit out in front here to get the camera in to show it to you. But, uh, I mean, the stem still looks healthy, and there's a good chance that these kale plants will bounce back, so I'm not going to rip them out because there's still lots of time for kale to grow. But it's just fascinating to me that uh, these insect pests, and this, in this particular case that are using sort of um, <clears throat> visual cues to find the plant, can find it <laughs> like it, it's amazing what that weed growth can actually do to the plant so obviously lots of lessons learned here I think uh, lesson number one having certain wildlife species and in this case I know, I know I'm partial to birds but uh, having the house wrens basically nest in your garden not near it like I'm talking right in it and having enough cover and enough biomass to keep them happy it's amazing what they do while they're there for your garden pests because and granted they're not just eating cabbage white butterfly larva but that's a species that uh, goes right down in under the cover and uh, sort of hunts out its prey in there and uh, is hunting a lot of prey when they're feeding young <clears throat> the downside to that of course is when they're done that part of their life cycle they move on and you suddenly lose that uh, natural sort of pest deterrent or uh, pest eradicator that uh, was using your garden. Lesson number two I think has to do with weeds. We sometimes are a bit lax on weeds because some of the weeds, particularly the lambs quarters, is a viable feed option for the rabbits in particular but it also has a tendency to get out of hand. Now we have we do find that the mulch definitely helps with the uh, weeds like the lambs quarters but it doesn't eradicate everything we do have some other fairly aggressive uh, I'm going to call them for lack of a better term weeds that are of limited use to us but uh, it can still sort of compete well in a mulched bed or at least our mulched bed so there's definitely some things to think about there and uh, I think we just need to get better at the succession of our garden uh, getting covers on we didn't get cover on everything as much as we would like this year <clears throat> and uh, potentially weeding a little bit better earlier in the year so that we don't get overrun. That being said, 2022 for us has been a very wet year and everything has grown like mad, weeds or otherwise. So <clears throat> this is not necessarily completely representative of a typical year for us. And the last sort of lesson or I think interesting piece, maybe it's not a lesson, but for me is when you look at those plants and <clears throat> it's common knowledge for what it's worth that uh, a lot of pests and it's not restricted just to insects get a better foothold or are able to sort of 
really capitalize on using whatever their host species is when their host species sort of I say immune system or just general health is a little bit compromised it's amazing how they can get sort of a crazy foothold and even though I can't 100% scientifically prove the connections here between the house wrens leaving the garden the weed growth and the uh, sort of really poor condition of some of our kale plants due to uh, cabbage white infestations it's a it's pretty pretty easy to, to connect those dots I mean it all happened in the same relative space and time and uh, it's compounding factors. I think that's that's the big thing. That's a take home message for homesteading in general is you can have some really well thought out plans, but there will be compounding factors that you have to experience them or see them firsthand sometimes to appreciate them because some things can be boiled down into such a simple sentence like or phrase of well, insects are attracted to plants that are not healthy or not happy simple phrase but what does that actually look like and for every species it's a little bit different so on that note we're going to continue weeding a bit and do our normal daily chores and we'll leave you with this image of this uh, pretty skeletonized red Russian kale plant as I say it's going to be really fascinating to see if these bounce back because red Russian kale is pretty pretty aggressive grower so I don't think these have been killed and I think we'll still get a harvest out of them, which is still pretty awesome. But hopefully you enjoyed this video, and it's, uh, if nothing else, some food for thought, or in this case, definitely some uh, thought for your food and the biology and ecology of your food, which I think is all too often overlooked.